Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here to share with you the books that I'm currently reading and the books that I'm hoping to get to in the month of July or really my TBR pile because as always I have too many books out from the library and I'm not going to read all of these in July. First I'll start with nonfiction and the nonfiction pile that I have including the book I'm currently reading which is I Cried to Dream Again Trafficking, Murder, and Deliverance by Sarah Crusin. I'm maybe halfway through this book and it's a memoir of a woman who is looking back at her life. She was forced into sex trafficking when she was 11 and then she killed the person who was forcing her to do this. The person who was in charge of this entire sex trafficking ring when she was 16 and she ended up going to prison. Her story of how that all happens including her home life and her very very complicated relationship with her mother who was not really ever there and was very very abusive. This book is really tough to read. The things that she is talking about is really hard for me to fathom like how that actually happened to a young child and that nobody around her was noticing these things happening. I don't know how I feel. I also have everything I need I get from you. How fangirls created the internet as we know it. Sadly, I think this one is only an Audible exclusive, which makes me really angry. We'll see if I actually read the physical form of it. It looks like something that maybe I can get really into as I start reading it. What I've heard about this is that it's not so much about fandom culture in general, and it's very much so a specific fandom culture that we are focusing on. The reviews that I read have said that she really only talks about One Direction in this book over and over again. I think if I wasn't a One Direction fan, or I wasn't a One Direction fan a long time ago, Go. I feel like I wouldn't pick this up, but because I am and I do recall a lot of the things about that fandom, I am interested to see what I think about this. Also, I love the cover and I think it is perfect, especially the little emoji heart. Then I have Bodies on the Line. I have this one already checked out on audiobook and it's probably going to be maybe my next nonfiction read after I Cried to Dream Again. This is At the Front Lines of the Fight to Protect Abortion in America by Lauren Rankin. This was published in April with the thought and belief that Roe v. Wade was going to fall. And so it's looking at how uh, different abortion providers have had people who walk women into the abortion clinic, the volunteers who escort the women into the clinics to receive care. It says, with precision and passion, Lauren Rankin traces the history and evolution of this movement to tell a broader story of the persistent threats to safe and legal abortion access and the power of individuals to stand up and fight back. I am really interested in this, especially with all of the news that we've been hearing and how angry I have been reading the news lately. I'm hoping that this is enlightening and inspirational in ways. I'm hoping. I also have Under the Skin by Linda Villarosa. This is the hidden toll of racism on American lives and on the health of our nation. All I know about this is that it was originally um, like a shorter essay in the 1619 project that Nicole Hannah Jones had put together. Then that created this book. It's basically how racism hurts the health outcomes of black Americans. Hopefully it's a really good and interesting read. And then last but not least for my nonfiction pile, I have The Women's House of Detention by Hugh Ryan. This is a queer history of a forgotten gotten prison. This one was one that I just saw while I was at the library and I thought looked really really fascinating. It focuses on a prison that was in New York City's Greenwich Village from 1929 to 1974 and that's where a lot of women and um, transgender men and people who are just like not conforming to gender as expected of them during that time were taken to that prison. How that created this culture of the people that were there looking out for each other. It says historian Hugh Ryan explores the roots of this crisis and reconstructs the little known lives of incarcerated New Yorkers making a uniquely queer case for prison abolition and demonstrating that by queering the village the House of D helped define queerness for the rest of America. It looks interesting. Definitely gonna check that one out and I have put it on hold on audiobook. Then I have four adult fiction books. I'm probably gonna read this one next. I think I'm gonna read it as I'm reading um, I Cried to Dream Again. I've been really, really looking forward to this book. I love Sabrina and Corinna by Kali Fajardo Anstein. This is her new book, Woman of Light. It's a very expansive kind of book. It traces a family line through many, many decades. I think from like the 1800s until like kind of now. It's really interesting so far. It's very descriptive so far. I've, I've read maybe like 10 pages. I really need to like focus and sit down but I feel like the characters have spunk to them and are very interesting. Yeah so it's Pardona Pueblo and the Lost Territory and then into Denver Colorado and hopefully I love it as much as Sabrina and Corinna and it hits kind of those things about you know changing communities and Denver in general. I just am really fascinated by her fiction. The next book that I was going to talk about is Tides by Sarah Freeman. I have this um, out on Libra FM. It was an ALC last month I think. This is like a nice short quick read 
kind of reminiscent of Jenny Offal and also I just read Chemistry by Wika Wang that's kind of similar to this where it's just like little snippets that add on to each other. This is a book about a woman who suffered a loss and then she ends up on a seaside town and starts working there and then um, she meets someone. It says it's a spare visceral novel about the nature of selfhood, intimacy, and the private narratives that shape our lives. Then the next book that I have is Out There by Kate Folk. I've read really interesting things about this book and how it's like weird stories but the stories they're kind of like analogies to our current lives today it's speculative literary fiction I'm interested to see if I get on with it I'm not 100% sure it's it's gonna be a book for me I think what's really enticing me to read it is that it has to do with our current world today and then last but not least I have reputation by Lex Croucher I did not know Lex Croucher's book ended up being published in the US as well I knew that it had come out in the UK but I hadn't seen it around here it was a moment for me of being like wow that's someone that I like used to watch when I was growing up and like in high school and stuff and now she's written a book I'm not particularly into Pride and Prejudice retellings I'm not particularly into Regency romances or much of romance in general I have heard there's like some heavy topics dealt with in this story I'm not 100% sure I'm gonna read it but I have it with me if I'm kind of in that mood to read something different so I'm interested to see if I end up liking it if I end up reading it. Have any of you read this book and did you used to watch Lex Croucher growing up? And then last but not least my stack of graphic novels. I have a lot of kids ones and then one adult one. I have Tide Song by Wendy Zhu and this one it does have to do with like stuff in the ocean it seems like. Um, so it's definitely very fantasy focused. I'm thinking it might be good for my book club so I'm, I'm looking into it for that reason and also just to recommend to kids who like more fantasy graphic novels. I don't read very many of them but I do really enjoy the art style. I think it's really really cute um, so I'll see what I think about that one. I also have one I've been looking forward to and that's Bad Sister. This one has to do with an older sister who does something to her younger brother not too maliciously but she starts thinking of herself as a bad sister and starts pondering how she could be a better sister. It looks like just a really sweet, cute, realistic story with family dynamics and I'm usually into that in um, kids graphic novels. I also have one I've been really really looking forward to and it's Swim Team. I've seen so many rave reviews about this one and I'm really interested to see what I think of it. It's about a girl who's always been scared of swimming and then starts being part of this swimming team and, and she gets tips from people around her in her community as well and it's this uh, run to win a championship basically against a rival school. I really enjoy the arts inside as well and I'm gonna try it out and see what I end up thinking about it. I also have Big Apple Diaries by Alyssa Bermudez. I had seen this one before but I didn't know that it was actually kind of historical. It's set in 2000-2001 and it's based on the illustrator's real life growing up in New York City during this time period and being Puerto Rican in New York City as well. The entire book is kind of in a blue palette which I like. And I also like the illustrations. I think it's going to be kind of a realistic, you know, boys and then also all of the stuff that happens with 9-11 um, and her kind of dealing with that as well. And then last but not least, I have Hakim's Odyssey, book one from Syria to Turkey. And this is by Fabian Tulme. I'm still really interested in stories about refugees and what it takes to navigate that new landscape. This is a three book series, so I'll read the first one and see what I think and how it kind of holds up to other refugee narratives that I've read before. And that's it for all the books that are new to my life that have come in from the library. I still have quite a few that you've seen before that I haven't read yet that are still up there as possibilities. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. If you read any of these books or would like to read any of them, leave a comment down below or leave me an emoji of your favorite animal. That will also be interesting to me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.